We've been RVing with our four cats for just over a year and I've been answering a lot of questions on our other videos and I realized our cats have changed. So it's time to do an update video for you. Yeah, let's do this mom. I want to hear what you have to say about me. If you haven't watched these four videos, do that after you finish this one. They'll give you lots of great cat tips and give you context of what I'm talking about in this video. And I feel like this is going to be a hodgepodge of information because it's an update from four different videos. I'm going to do my best to keep it organized and keep it in a logical sequence so you can follow along all the way to the end. <coughs> to start off, no, their core personalities have not changed, but how they handle living in an RV and traveling definitely has. If you have a kitten, I don't recommend you have it loose in the vehicle until you train it to travel in the car, and that goes along with any cat. When I first got my cats, I didn't just let them loose in the vehicle. They rode around in their cages, and then we stopped the vehicle, and then I let them roam around, put them back in the vehicle until they got used to it. And no, if you are in an accident and your cats are loose, yes, there is a possibility for them to get hurt. And the last piece of general information is that I have taught my cats some new words, and I feel that this is helping them understand what's going to be happening in travel day. The cats all travel much better than when we first started. We know the longer we sit in an area, the harder it's going to be to get the cats traveling again. And since we work at job sites all throughout the United States, sometimes we have to do some long hauls. And that might be multiple days of traveling one after another. So on day one, we expect to be pretty annoyed in the truck. Day two, we know it's going to get better. And day three, they're pretty much used to it. If it's going on day six, they've pretty much given up on life. Are we seriously traveling again, Mom? All the cats have their territory marked in the truck and they defend it. Roska must be in the big cage that is placed behind the driver's seat or she starts a fight with the cat that's occupying it to make them evacuate. This is not her cage. She never sits in it any other time, but on travel day, it's hers. And Roska's like a Sour Patch Kid. First she's sour, then she's sweet. But on drive day, she gets a gold star every single time. She'll sit in the cage sometimes for eight hours and we never see her. We actually have to check to make sure she's still in there. What they don't realize is that I like to start trouble when everything is calm. There's a lot going on during a truck ride with cats meowing and other vehicles passing us. This is not my time to shine, so I just catch up on my sleep. That way I'm well rested to torment my siblings when we get back into the RV. Squeak thinks he owns the truck. Before we went full time, he was the only cat that went for rides and he does not like sharing it at all. Squeak has no problem sharing the RV, but the truck is a different story. It's just not fair. I'm the adventure cat. I'm the one that got to go on truck rides while those losers stayed at home. I already have to share my cat food, the litter box, the RV, and now the truck? I don't think so. I'm gonna show them who's boss. He tries to defend the center console, the back window seat, and the basket that rides on the passenger's lap. So he'll do circles around them. Squeak usually ends up sleeping on the center console, but turned around facing the back seat. And that way when the cats start moving, he hisses at them, which is very helpful at night when the cats wake up and we don't want them coming forward. He turns into our little guard cat and makes him stay in the back seat. Daisy hates going for truck rides. Let's get this straight. It's not that I don't like going for truck rides. I don't want to do anything that I don't want to do. If I want to sleep in the cat floor all day, then just leave me there. But no, I get thrown into the truck to be there for hours on end. And I don't get a say in the matter, do I? Daisy likes to let you know she doesn't like going for a truck ride, so she'll either sit in the window seat behind me and constantly meow, a nice low meow, nothing loud, or just sit in the back seat and meow until she is tired of it. If I invite her up to come to the basket in the front seat, then I give her a massage and then she starts this nice meow like, ha ha, I got you sucker, now you get to massage me and right when you stop, I'm gonna meow again. So she'll get about a good hour massage until I put her back in the back seat. But then she usually does stop meowing. And then when she wakes up for the night, recently she's been going on the back seat headrest and she just looks out the back window. I don't know really what she's looking at because most of the time she's just looking at the camper, but then she'll pass out there for a couple hours. It doesn't look comfortable, but she likes to do it, so we let her. Diesel is a cat I thought would have the most issues going for a truck ride because he's such a scaredy cat, but once I can get Daisy to shut up, he'll just chill, but Daisy can get him worked up over nothing when she starts her meowing again. And Daisy and Diesel will sleep together in the smaller cage and I put a blanket over the top of it to make it dark because they like sleeping in forts and Diesel also likes sleeping down underneath the seat on the floor. I love the truck ride. I really love to sleep. 
So once Daisy stops meowing, I can fall asleep. And I don't have to worry about Rasta because she's in her cage, so I know no one's going to attack me. If the cats are all acting a fool, or they won't calm down, or we're coming up to heavy traffic, we always put them back in their cages. And we barely give the cats sedatives before traveling. The night before, I tell them they're going on a truck ride, and again in the morning to help them mentally prepare, and they all know what that word means now. Oh, I know the word truck ride all right. And when mom says it, I immediately give her stink eye and start my catitude in full force. We also call the RV home. So when we're traveling and I need to put them in the cages, I tell them we're going home and it makes them a lot easier to load them up. So they want to go home because most of them will not use the litter box or eat or drink for the entire trip besides diesel. So right when they come inside the RV, they run to the litter box, they eat and drink, and they're happy to be back in their space. Another thing we did is bought an RV toll pass. The first toll that we came through was like at 10 o'clock at night when we were going down to work the hurricane and the cats are awake and the toll booth had a spot to take the ticket out at the bottom for a car or the top for a semi. Well, we're in the middle and Steve couldn't reach it, so we had to get out of the vehicle and go get the ticket. So immediately we said, that's not gonna work. We heard about the RV toll pass before, so we researched it and figured out it works at most electronic toll booths and it would work for us, so we ordered it. And we'll link that information down below too in case you need something like that as well. When this guy right here has been in one location too long, we know it's time to move because he starts screaming at us in the morning. Right after he eats his breakfast, he wants outside to sunbathe in his cage for hours. And it means whatever's happening outside the window is not entertaining him. And by moving, it does reset his little catitude. I like to go on adventures, what can I say? And they knew this about me before I moved in because I was full of grease and oil when I was out exploring the property the day they met me. I only need about five hours a day. A mix of a truck ride, backpack ride, walking on the leash and harness, rolling on the cement, eating some grass, going in the cupboard. I mean, it's not that hard, and I don't understand why they can't give it to me. But when I know they start ignoring me, in the morning when I get up and I eat my wet food, then I immediately start screaming at them to make sure I get put out in my cage so I can get outside and start my adventures early. All the cats really love to go in the shed when we visit Steve's mom in Mooch Dock. That's the shed that they transitioned into RV life in, and it's their play place. They think it's a playground. They love running up and down the steps, chasing their toys, and eating bugs. And when I say the word shed, they put a little smile on their cat face. For real. They love it. Well, I love the shed. And when mom says the word shed, I stop my catitude. I start purring, being real sweet and nice. She doesn't really see this side of me very often. That way I get to go, and when I get out there, oh man, I run and play and have so much fun for hours. And once in a while, she tells me it's bedtime, but I'm not done playing. And there might be a bug or a mouse that might come through, and I want to make sure I'm there for it. So I just hide from her, and I get to stay in there all by myself, all night long. Daisy doesn't trust anything. She didn't trust anything as a kitten, and she still doesn't as an adult. So whenever we put her in her cage just to sit outside and chill, she always thinks she's going for a truck ride, so she puts up a fight. And then when she goes out, she's like, oh, I'm just sitting outside, that's cool. And she also never really got into backpack rides. Once in a while she'll want to go, but other times she just wants to be left alone. But again, the backpack transports her to a truck, so she freaks out. Sometimes Diesel is good in a backpack, and other times he doesn't. It really matters what time of day it is, I think. Daisy and Diesel do not like doing anything during the daylight, but at night, they're cool to go outside. All the cats love to sit and chill in their cage outside at dusk and dawn, and Squeak wants to sit out there just for hours on end. One thing to make travel day easier, we switch the chair and the chest around, so the chest is always by the window, and this has turned into a cat magnet. It's the perfect height to look out the window, they get fresh air, and when it's cold out, I put the heating pad on there, so usually I have a cat or two on the chest all day long. Cats are going like cray cray at night and they will not stop meowing or running around. We found the only thing that works for us is shutting off all the lights and going into the bedroom. And they're like, oh man, it's bedtime. Okay, let's try again tomorrow. And it settles everyone down. So if your cats are driving you insane at night, that might work for you too. And Diesel is all about bedtime now. He gets so excited when we say the word bedtime, he starts his happy meow and he starts running to the bedroom. I'm not sure if he's more excited to sleep or start his retaliation against Raska for all her torment she put him through during the day. I'm the king of sleeping, so bedtime is extra amazing. But it's also my time to retaliate against Raska. When I hear it's bedtime, I run in and set up shop. 
I know that she loves sleeping on her daddy, so I start taking over her territory, and it drives her crazy. And I'm the one who gets to sleep on the bed at night while she sleeps on the floor. One issue that we're having is Daisy is petrified of rain. The cats are scared of anything's on the roof, but Daisy is especially afraid of rain, and any little raindrop sounds loud in the RV, so a big storm coming through freaks her out, and she meows like crazy. Diesel's a little bit scared, more of it I think is because Daisy's meowing to make him scared and Rask and Squeak really couldn't care. So one thing we do is if we know a big rainstorm is coming we shut our bedroom slide and that makes a gap underneath and it's also a sound barrier and this allows Daisy to go somewhere where she can't hear it as much. I also put on her cat playlist which soothes her and helps her calm down. I really don't want to say this because I'm so afraid I'm going to jinx myself but we haven't used this scat in months. Rask has stopped all her issues at the door pawing all night this stuff was amazing so if you have a cat behavior problem make sure you watch the other videos to learn about scat hey if you haven't already watched the other videos in the playlist rv travel with cats make sure to check those out next you can click on the video on the screen you can find the link down in the description below or you can search the playlist on the youtube channel if you have any questions leave my parents a comment and they'll answer and we'll see you in the next cat video